Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues Journal Club. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and here is what I have for you today. It is known that intravenous immunoglobin is an established treatment for many immune mediated disorders. Now the study that I'm talking about presents a case report of two individuals highlighting a potentially serious but under recognized side effect of intravenous immunoglobin therapy. A 67 year old female with no pertinent past medical history presented with a three day history of acute onset progressive quadriparesis with intact bladder bowel functions. Global airflexia on neurological examination with intact sensations along with the nerve conduction studies suggestive of motor demyelinating polyneuropathy and albuminocytological dissociation in the CSF examination led to the diagnosis of Guillain-Barré syndrome. The doctors administered this intravenous immunoglobin therapy for 5 days. She received approximately 170 grams of the intravenous immunoglobin. Although her limb weakness stabilized, she did develop acutely progressive anemia on the ninth day and her hemoglobin dropped to 8 gram per deciliter a day later. The peripheral smear revealed 2 to 3 nucleated RBCs, white blood cells and abundant polychromatophils. Her direct antiglobin test was negative on two occasions. She was transfused with one unit of packed O red blood cells. Her hemoglobin improved thereafter to 11.2 and her reticulocyte also dropped to 2% on the 24th day after this initiation therapy. The second report that I'm talking is of a 20 year old male with no again significant past medical history. This person presented with a four day history of acute onset progressive motor quadriparesis without any bladder bowel involvement. Neurological examination revealed global airflexia and intact sensations, motor demyelinating polyneuropathy in the nerve conduction studies, and albuminocytological dissociation in the CSF examination favored again the diagnosis of Guillain-Barré syndrome. The team infused total intravenous immunoglobin dose of 140 grams over 5 days. He developed an acute onset anemia as like the previous one with a rapid drop in the hemoglobin level to 7.7. .7. This happened on the 10th day of initiating intravenous immunoglobin. The rise in the indirect bilirubin and serum LDH along with peripheral smears shows nucleated RBCs and polychromasia favoring hemolysis. Thereafter, his hemoglobin further improved to 11.8 on 24th day after the initiation therapy. So keeping these two reports in mind, the researchers concluded that these case studies did highlight a potentially serious but under-recognized side effect of intravenous immunoglobin therapy. It is important that medical practitioners are aware of this adverse effect for early recognition and management. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe and press the bell icon.